In this video lesson, let us understand regarding the classification of haloalkanes. Haloalkanes are classified on different bases. Namely, depending on the number of halogen atoms, number of halogen atoms present in that organic compound. Haloalkanes are classified as monohaloalkanes. Dihaloalkanes and trihaloalkanes. Trihaloalkanes. The name itself is giving you clear idea about how many halogens are attached in these three different types of alkanes. Mono halo alkanes. They are the organic compounds which contain one halogen atoms attached to the alkyl group. Dihalo alkanes. They contain two halogen atoms attached to the alkyl group. Trihalo alkanes. They contain three halogen atoms attached to the alkyl group. Now, in the next video lessons, I will be dealing in detail with dihaloalkanes and trihaloalkanes. Now, let us take up in detail about the study of monohaloalkanes. What are monohaloalkanes? Again, they are the haloalkanes which contain one halogen attached to the alkyl group. Say for example, CH3Br, methyl group is the alkyl group to which Br, bromine is attached. The name of this compound is methyl bromide. Methyl bromide is its trivial nomenclature. Bromomethane is its IUPAC nomenclature. Remember for IUPAC nomenclature, it should always follow the pattern as halo alkane. That means the halogen component to be written first followed by the name of the alkane from which it is being derived. Whereas in trivial nomenclature, it will follow the rule as alkyl halide. First you will write the alkyl group and then the name of the halide group. Now this is an example of mono halo alkane. Similarly we can go on with many examples. CH3, CH2, I, CH3, CH2 is nothing but C2H5 that is ethyl group. So ethyl iodide. The name of this compound is ethyl iodide and it's this is trivial nomenclature and its IUPAC nomenclature is going to be iodoethane. Now let us proceed further with some more classification that is being done for monohaloalkanes. Monohaloalkanes are further categorized into three more types. They are further categorized into three more types. Namely, primary alkyl halides, primary alkyl halides, secondary alkyl halides, And tertiary alkyl halides. Tertiary alkyl 
elements. These are the three different types of monohalo alkanes, namely primary alkyl halides, secondary alkyl halides, tertiary alkyl halides. All of these three alkyl halides thus contain only one halogen atom in their compound. Now let us take up the study in little more detail. Primary alkyl halides can be in short represented primary as 1 naught and this as secondary as 2 naught and tertiary as 3 naught. This representation is given for the type of the carbon atom to which the halogen atom is attached. Now what are primary alkyl halides? They are the mono halogen derivatives of alkanes wherein the halogen atom is attached to primary carbon atom. Say for example R CH2 X. X is a member of halogen. X can be any member. It can be fluorine. It can be chlorine. It can be bromine. Or it can be iodine. X can be any member of halogen. Now, if the halogen atom is attached to primary carbon atom. In this case, this carbon atom is a primary carbon atom. Now, how to identify any carbon atom as a primary carbon atom? Very simple tip I give you. If the carbon atom is directly attached with two hydrogen, then you can understand that carbon to be a primary carbon atom. Or else, one more way you can identify is, if the carbon atom under consideration is attached to one other carbon atom, then also we can call this carbon atom as primary. Say, look at this case. CH3, CH2 and then CL. Now this carbon atom is primary carbon atom. How can we say that this is a primary carbon atom? Take a proper look at this carbon atom under consideration. This is directly attached with two hydrogen atom. Then also it can be called as primary. Or else the carbon atom under consideration is attached with one other carbon atom. Then also we can call this as primary to such a primary carbon atom, if a halogen is attached, then that compound gets the name as primary haloalkane or primary alkyl halide. We can either call it as haloalkane or alkyl halide. Example for this compound, I replace this R with, let me say C2H5. C2H5 I split and write it as CH3CH2 and I stick on to the same CH2 and instead of X I will let me replace it with BR. What's the name of this compound then? It's going to be propyl bromide. Propyl bromide or bromopropane. Bromopropane. Propyl bromide is trivial nomenclature. Bromopropane is IUPAC nomenclature. Now let us understand about secondary alkyl halide or secondary haloalkane. Here halogen atom is attached to secondary carbon atom. The general representation goes like this. R twice C H then X. This carbon atom here is secondary. How to recognize a secondary carbon atom? If the carbon atom under consideration is attached to only one hydrogen, 
then we can understand that to be a secondary carbon atom or else if the carbon atom under consideration is attached to two other carbon atoms remember this r will be containing other component of alkyl group or maybe aryl group in this case it is containing r2 that means it is this carbon atom is attached to two other carbon atoms now let us take up another example here ch3 then c ch3 then h and then here let me replace it with br now what do we see this is the central carbon atom under consideration which is attached with one hydrogen atom directly then also it gets the name as secondary carbon atom or as one more way to recognize is if the central carbon atom is attached with two other carbon atom as you can see in this case direct linkage then also it gets the name as secondary carbon atom to such a secondary carbon atom if a halogen is attached then it gets the name as secondary halo alkane or secondary alkyl halide let us name this compound ch3 c ch3 this will be our parent chain and if we give the locant we we'll start either from here or from here it's going to be say 1 2 3 to the second carbon atom br is attached therefore what would be the name of this compound bromo propane bromo because bromine is attached and this is bromine is attached to the second carbon atom so let us make it as two bromo and this parent chain is containing three carbon atoms and it is saturated so therefore prop is the root word to be used a is the suffix to be placed for saturated hydrocarbon therefore the name will be two bromo propane or else its regular nomenclature will be isopropyl bromide because it's a branched structure it gets the name as isopropyl bromide now let us understand what are tertiary alkyl halides if the halogen atom is attached to tertiary carbon atom i repeat if the halogen is attached to tertiary carbon atom then all such compounds gets the name as tertiary alkyl halides or tertiary halo alkanes the general formula for tertiary halo alkanes goes like this r thrice c and to this c if x is attached then it is tertiary alkyl halide that means the carbon atom under consideration is not directly linked with any hydrogen or else the carbon atom under consideration is in linkage with three other carbon atoms in either of the case we call that carbon atom as a tertiary carbon atom and to such a tertiary carbon atom if halogen atom is attached then it gets the name as tertiary alkyl halides or tertiary halo alkanes let us understand this concept also with a example now this is the carbon atom which is the central carbon atom under consideration it is attached with 3 r's in this case i have considered all the 3 of the r's by allyl group not necessarily that these r should be allyl it may be allyl or it may be unlyl the point of focus is the central carbon atom or the carbon atom under consideration should be directly attached with three other carbon atom as you can see in this particular case and please also note that the carbon atom under consideration should not be directly linked with any hydrogen again i would like to draw your attention here i'm talking about direct linkage of hydrogen should not be there i did not tell that the compound should not have hydrogen please remember the change 
I said this carbon atom under consideration should not be directly linked with hydrogen. It doesn't convey that the compound should not have hydrogen. Definitely in a hydrocarbon there will be presence of hydrogen. Now let us call this carbon as tertiary because it fulfills the condition. It matches with the general formula. And to such a tertiary carbon atom, if halogen is attached, in the example I have considered, it is the bromine which is got attached. It can be any other halogen other than bromine as I have already shown to you. It can be any member, either fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. Now in this case, it is bromine. So therefore, we will name this compound. 1, 2, 3. Either you can go like this or you can come like this. Anyway, or you can also go like this. The nomenclature will be the same. Now what do we see? This second carbon is attached with bromine on one side and methyl group on the other side. So what would be the name of this compound then? 2-bromo. First we will write this because alphabetizing the order. 2-bromo. Then to the same second carbon atom there is methyl group attached 2 bromo 2 methyl and 1 2 3 3 carbon atoms and saturated therefore the name propane so what is the name of this compound then 2 bromo 2 methyl propane that's its IUPAC nomenclature and its trivial nomenclature will be third butyl bromide Third butyl bromide. This term third stands for tertiary. So therefore third butyl bromide butyl because it is containing four carbon atoms in this compound. And bromide is the halogen which is attached to the tertiary carbon atom. So that is about the different classification of monohalo and kids. One very important fact that you should also parallelly know is that all monohaloalkanes, irrespective whether primary, secondary, tertiary, can all be represented by the same general formula as CnH2n plus 1 X, where X indicates the number of halogen and this formula is a slight modificated formula of the alkanes. What is the general formula of alkanes? You know that it is CnH2n plus 2. Now there one hydrogen atom is being substituted by a halogen. Therefore the formula changes from CnH2n plus 2 to CnH2n plus 1 and instead of one more hydrogen there is halogen. Let us see for the same example this formula suits or not. Now look at this M indicates the number of carbon atoms. Now look at the number of carbon atoms here. We see 1, 2, 3, 4. So what is the value of N? 4 and 2N, 2 into N, it's 4 into 2. So that is 8 and then plus 1, 9. H9 and X. So let us see whether that is fulfilled. 3 hydrogen here, 6 hydrogen, 3 plus 3 and 3 more, 9. So it is suiting with the formula. Wherein in the place of X, Br is there. So, like this, you can verify for all other formulas. This formula of CnH2n plus 1 X suits for all the different types of monohalo alkanes. In my next video lesson, I will be dealing in more detail with the dihalo alkanes. Also, watch for better understanding that video.